Movie footage used in the kill count is owned entirely by the copyright holders. Dead Meat makes no claim of ownership and simply uses the footage for purposes of education, commentary, and criticism under fair use. Please support filmmakers and the art of filmmaking by watching Jigsaw in its entirety on home media or streaming services where available. Welcome to The Kill Count, where we tally up the victims in all our favorite horror movies. I'm James A. Janice, and today we're looking at Jigsaw, currently the latest film in the Saw franchise, having come out just last year in 2017. Jigsaw comes after a seven-year gap in the franchise and was written by newcomers Josh Stolberg and Peter Goldfinger. Directed by the Spirit Brothers, it has a decidedly updated look to it. Instead of feeling trapped in the mid-2000s like the original Saw films, it's much more polished in terms of cinematography and lighting. Unfortunately, for those of us who relished in the soap opera storytelling, Telling of Saw's 1 through 3D, Jigsaw doesn't pick up that torch to carry. It's sort of a soft reboot of the series, with the only returning character, besides Billy the Puppet, being John Kramer himself, played by Tobin Bell, who is once again the best part of the movie. But it's not a hard reboot, because everything we saw still took place. It's a little confusing, and the movie gets ambitious with how much it tries to do, but unfortunately, its big twist is weighed down by bigger plot holes and a major retcon that doesn't jive with what we know from the first seven Saws. With all that being said, how does Jigsaw stack up in terms of kills? Let's find out and get to them. The movie begins with some cops laying out a spike mat that makes this car have a real theme park stunt show style crash. The driver, Dirty Edgar here, takes off on foot and winds up on that roof from the room, maybe to sell Denny some drugs. This dude, Detective Halloran, shows up and regards Edgar like an old friend. Edgar! Edgar, what the fuck are you doing? But Edgar just tells Halloran and this other detective, Keith Hunt, that a game has begun. He says he has to pull the trigger on this device to save his own life, so he does and gets his hand shot off by the police. Elsewhere, we see a digital timer start in a room with five chains leading out of a wall. Although Halloran told his men to aim for the trigger, it looks like one of them shot Edgar in the chest. Luckily, Edgar still has enough breath to say, it started, and lead us into a title card. High tech, baby, ready player jigsaw. That timer we saw hits zero and some lights come on, waking up a bunch of bucket heads. Well, all but the bucket head on the end there. He's more like a, eh, fuck it head. Their wake up routines are interrupted by the voice of John Kramer over a speaker. I want to play a game. He says these people haven't accepted responsibility for the things they've done in life, but if they can come clean about the lies they've told, they can win salvation. Confess, the truth will set you free. Blessed be Father Jigsaw. The first task he gives them is simple enough. A blood sacrifice of any amount will get those buckets off their heads and let them go further in the Saw 5 style group trap. The chains begin pulling pulling them into the buzzsaws on the wall, even Sleepy over there, and although they resist at first, one of them decides to take Jigsaw at his word and offer up a small blood sacrifice. It works, and she's debucketed, so she spreads the good word to the others. They all follow suit, offering various amounts of blood, either purposefully or accidentally, and their doors open up to pull them further along. Except for Sleepy, who's just now realizing how many times he hit the snooze button, and despite some words of help, doesn't react in time to the blades before the others are all pulled into the next room. Later, a bunch of people in the park find a body hanging on display, and when the bucket top is removed by the police pathologist, we see that the head has been partially decapitated. They also learn a little later that this dude's name was Malcolm, so that's why it's on the list. The pathologists are L, short for Eleanor, a hip chick who likes to make puns, looks a little pale, and Logan Nelson, who knows Detective Hunt from the time they spent together serving in Fallujah. When Hunt sees Logan, he says he's sorry to hear about his wife Christine, who was killed two years prior. Rough time to bring that up, since right now they're dealing with a missing puzzle piece from Malcolm's neck. Someone's been studying up on John Kramer. Copycat? Hope not. Kramer's been dead for 10 years. Confusing, yeah, so maybe they can find more info on this USB drive they extract from the wound. The drive has a physical message etched into it saying, and then there were four, as well as an audio file on it that features John Kramer's voice. The games have begun again. After they identify the victim as Malcolm, Logan remembers his name as someone involved in a crime that Halloran failed to get any convictions for. That's not good polies right there. They run a voice analysis that confirms the voice on the audio file is in fact John Kramer's. What? You came back from the dead? Wouldn't be his first time. What? Yeah, it would be. He's never been a zombie. The Trap Plot Quad finds themselves in a hoedown-themed room and make introductions to each other. There's Mitch, who likes to kick things, Carly, who was kidnapped while cosplaying Tiffany Valentine, Anna, who's the only one piecing together that they must all be there for a reason, and Ryan, who says there's nothing in his life he should feel guilty about. Oh, and there's also Billy. He's just a simple puppet who wants to ride his tricycle, he wants to ride his trike, and his eyes are all aglow at the thought of Catholic sacraments. 
No, it's not creepy at all. Billy gives them his old puppet laugh, and their chains once again start retracting. Mitch tries to stop it by confessing about a time he sold a kid a motorcycle, and the kid died in a crash ten minutes later. But he denies any responsibility for it. Anna says she lost her baby when her husband mistakenly rolled over onto it during a nap, suffocating it, but she's got no mea culpas to give either. Mitch is able to grab a tape player from Billy, and it makes the chain stop retracting. On the tape, Jigsaw says that one of them is a thief who allowed a woman to die while they were snatching that purse. I'll go ahead and include that woman on the count, since, you know, she did. And she died because purse snatcher Carly didn't help her during an asthma attack. Now it turns out, Carly's been injected with a poison, and the tape tells her, It is you who could die without the right medication. Of the three needles in front of them, one has the antidote, another a saline solution, and in the third, frickin' acid, and not the Ken Kesey kind. Their chains will be released if they inject the right one, but they all might die if they don't. That's because the chains start up again, going into the ceiling this time, and all four of them start to hang. Carly is too scared to pick one of the needles for herself, so Ryan Ryan swings over and injects her with all three, freeing everyone from their neck shackles. That's great news for all of them, except Carly, who's got a trio of needles in her neck. Her skin starts bubbling and then just kind of falls apart completely, and Carly falls to the barn floor, dead from a ton of blood coming out her neck. There's a short argument about whether Mitch saved their lives or took Carly's, por que no los dos, before Mitch finds a combination number inside one of the syringes that opens the next door in their path. In the new room, despite a warning not to, Ryan tries to break down an exit only to fall through the floorboards into a trap that wraps metal wires around his leg. Oh, that's gotta hurt. There's a tape under the floorboards too, and although it proves very risky to retrieve, Mitch manages to pull through and get it out. On the tape, John Kramer chastises Ryan for trying to take a shortcut and says the only way to be set free is to pull this lever. But Ryan surmises that be set free means be free of half a limb, so he doesn't want to pull it and lose his leg. The barn goes dark, and Mitch and Anna are led into a grain silo by a light. The door closes on them, and a flat screen TV comes on, with another monitor turning on near Ryan beneath the floorboards. Simulcast across both of them is Farmer Billy again. And may I just say, Billy, you're looking real good in this movie. Talk about a glow up. Billy says that now the lever is also the only way to save Mitch and Anna. From what? Motherfucking grain engulfment! A terrifying way to die that actually kills a handful of farmers every year. It really sucks, dude. But Ryan is still too afraid to pulverize his own leg, so Anna and Mitch are buried up to their necks, which Ryan sees on his subterranean monitor. Various sharp tools start raining down upon the pair of them, but thankfully they're being dropped by some stormtroopers, so pretty much all of them miss. Ryan finally builds up the courage to pull the lever, and just as expected, the wires tighten around his leg and straight up trifurcate it. Looks like a little leg sushi roll there. Sucks for him, but there is some good news. Their next door opens, and Mitch and Anna are freed, even though she nearly gets pitchforked in the face. Let's catch up with a bunch of cop plot stuff. Blood under the fingernails of that buckethead body Malcolm are revealed to match the blood of a perp taken a decade ago. Hmm, who could that be? Hopefully the movie will spell it out for me. The blood under the fingernails of our first victim it's John Kramer's blood. Wow, never would have guessed. The jigsaw killer. Yeah, we know. We know. Then a blonde, acided body is thrown from the roof of the hospital with a note saying, and then there were three. Logan shows Halloran and Hunt how the Vic was killed by hydrofluoric acid injected into her neck, and they also find a puzzle piece carved out of her tongue. Ah, shit, you know what? I forgot. What movie am I watching again? Jig fucking saw. That's right, Jigsaw. Just keep on telling me, movie. I'm sure it'll stick eventually. Halloran starts growing suspicious of Eleanor because apparently she's been visiting a website called Jigsaw Rules, which they they disclose when they question Logan about her. Logan, you ever heard of a website called Jigsaw Rules? Jigsaw Rules! Logan tracks Eleanor down at a bar to tell her that the cops are sniffing up her alley. He also mentions that he fucking hates Halloran because he's bad police and some suspects that he let go later wound up killing innocent people, including, in one occasion, a little girl who wound up on Logan's autopsy table. Ellen takes Logan to her quote-unquote studio, which is more of a saw trap museum, featuring recreations of favorites such as the Carry Cracker, the Strom Submerger, and the I Be Gone gun thing. Oh, and of course, the OG RBT itself. Her most prized part of the collection, though, is this red spiral of death. Supposedly, John Kramer designed this trap for a game that took place before all the others. She bought the plans off the internet and recreated it, although Logan says she may have been duped since no Jigsaw victims on record ever died from anything like this. Maybe they should fact check that with Detective Hunt, who's spying on them from outside with a camera. Anna wraps Ryan's leg and tries to cut off the blood flow with a belt, while Mitch checks under the hood of a tractor to find a tape player with his name on it. When he hits play, he's ensnared in a rope that holds him upside down while John Kramer's voice tells him that, hey, you know that kid who died in a crash on the bike you sold him? He was my nephew. Yep, and Mitch had sold the bike as being in perfect condition, even though he knew the brakes didn't work. That's why Jigsaw's nephew was killed in a nasty crash with a garbage truck. If only it hadn't been garbage day! Now the engine of that faulty bike is being used to power Jigsaw's death spiral trap. Same design as the one in L's studio. Mitch will have to skillfully navigate between the whirring blades to reach the brake lever on the ground. As he's lowered down, D 
deeper and deeper into the spiral. Anna tries to bypass the test by stopping the bike itself, and she's able to temporarily succeed with a metal rod through the tire. But Mitch probably should have taken that opportunity to pull the brake lever, because when the rod snaps, the spiral starts back up and tears him to pieces in a CGI twister of blood. It spits his mangled body out on the floor, leaving only two trap plot folk alive, and one of them is feeling as bad as Mitch looks. Okay, well, maybe not that bad. Edgar Munson, the dude shot on that rooftop in the beginning of the movie, has been in a coma in the hospital, but gets woken up with a substance injected into his IV and abducted by the unseen perpetrator. When the cops go to dig up John Kramer's body to make sure they're not dealing with a Night of the Living Jigsaw situation, they find Edgar's body instead, with his throat good and slit. And, of course, a jigsaw piece carved out of his cheek. Do we have a zombie John Kramer on our hands for real, though? With the pictures that Hunt took of Eleanor's studio, the cops have probable cause to bust into the place and see what they can find, other than a bunch of kill count background props. Maybe she's just filming a YouTube video, y'all. Except they do find a mangled body, like a Murphy bed, with a note saying that there are only two trap plot players left on the stage. Hunt picks up Logan and gives him a nice pair of bracelets to wear, but Logan insists that he and Eleanor are being set up and points the finger at Halloran, suspecting that he's also the one who shot Edgar in the chest while everyone else was aiming at his hand. It's revealed that Hunt is with Internal Affairs and that IA has indeed connected Halloran to multiple homicides over the years. Logan offers to help Hunt make a slam dunk case against Halloran by matching the bullet in Edgar Munson's chest to Halloran's gun, so they extract the slug and it does in fact match Halloran's Glock. Yes, Glock. They say Glock. Their words, not mine. That's a Glock 17. See? Logan goes back home, where Eleanor shows up to tell him that she's learned the location of the farm where the current game is taking place. She wants to head there with no cops so they can be the heroes of the day? Yeah, I'm sure that'll go well. They head off, not knowing that Halloran is following them. Back in the trap plot, Anna manages to break her way through a door to the outside, but right as she's wriggling out, she gets aww pig. She wakes up with a shackle around one of her ankles. Across from her is Ryan, with another shackle around, you know, his remaining ankle. In between them is a hooded figure who's revealed to be. Wait, by God, that's John Kramer's music. What the fuck? What's going on? What's going on? Yeah, that's what I said, dude. You're about to play a game. Oh, so same old, same old. John tells Ryan that he needs to fess up for the three deaths he's responsible for, apparently alluding to a time when Ryan was a fuckboy high schooler whose high-speed drunk antics launched him from a moving vehicle. That moving vehicle ran straight into a, another moving vehicle, resulting in a huge double explosion that killed Ryan's two friends and the driver they collided with. When Ryan finally confesses, but says he wants to live, Jigsaw says so does he. But since some careless resident at his hospital mixed up his name with another person's on their x-rays, his cancer wasn't noticed early enough to be treated. As for Anna, turns out she was John's neighbor, and in between making sketches of puppet tricycles and watching her domestic life dissolve, he was somehow able to just, uh, overhear the truth of what happened to their baby. Turns out Anna's husband Matthew didn't smother the baby accidentally. Instead, after the baby wouldn't stop crying, Anna smothered the baby intentionally with a pillow, then planted the body next to her sleeping husband husband to frame him. Holy fucking shit, that is a dark turn, Jigsaw. I've been rooting for this chick the whole movie. Why you gotta make me feel dirty like that? In another dark turn, after her husband was blamed and taken away by authorities, he wound up hanging himself out of guilt. Good lord, can we go back to neo-Nazis getting run over by cars instead of this heavy shit? John wants them to assume responsibility for their actions. He says they've been doing everything backwards and need to turn it all around. He'll give them the chance to do so with one final test. Here's your key to freedom. There's one shell and there's one shotgun. The rest is up to them. Man, I hate open-ended exams like this. Anna and Ryan aren't good at them either, as they just assume that John wants them to kill each other. Anna grabs the gun first and aims it at Ryan, preparing to earn her freedom, and Ryan doesn't realize until too late that Jigsaw said they got it backwards. As Anna pulls the trigger, the shotgun backfires into her face, killing her with an accidentally self-inflicted gun wound. Who would have thought that Ryan would be the last man standing in this trap plot? Well, I guess standing is pretty generous, as he's only able to crawl over to the spent shotgun shell and discover that the keys to their ankle pad locks were inside of it. John had put them there and been very literal with his words. Here's your key to freedom. But now the keys are totally fucked, and Ryan has no other option than to roll onto his back and say he's sorry. Eleanor and Logan get to a farm that she says belonged to Jill Tuck's family, so this must be the place. Halloran follows them there and ignores a call from Hunt, who's calling him from Halloran's apartment. Should have answered that phone, Hallie, my man. Maybe you could have explained the frozen skin jigsaw pieces Hunt just found in your freezer. Eleanor and Logan head inside and find all the used up game pieces of the traps we've watched play out during this movie. It's Jigsaw. Jigsaw's dead. 
Is he? Uh, yeah, dude, he has to be. Have you seen the beginning of Saw 4? But Eleanor claims that Jigsaw lives forever through the work of his followers, and that's when they stumble upon the cone of death that shredded Mitch to a husk. Logan turns on Ellie and suspects her of being behind everything, but as she proclaims her innocence, Halloran pops out and puts a gun to Logan's head. Logan puts his marine combat skills to good use and fights back as Eleanor runs away. Halloran manages to knock Logan out and runs off to chase Eleanor, but he loses her and winds up getting a needle in the back that knocks him out. Next thing you know, both Logan and Halloran are waking up with some fancy metal bibs around their necks that Logan immediately identifies as being freaking laser beams. John Kramer's voice comes over a speaker to tell them that they are the final two players of the game, and that the only way they'll get out of these laser collars is if they confess to the crimes that put them there. In response, Halloran asks what we're all dying to know. How are you alive? How are you still alive? Jigsaw says they have a choice over who goes first, and Halloran offers to do so, but instead he hits the button in front of Logan, which sends him back against the wall. With the laser show on full force, Logan confesses that he was the hospital resident who mixed up John Kramer's x-rays and caused his cancer to be missed until it was too late. But apparently, that confession's not enough, and the lasers close in on Logan's head, causing blood to go everywhere and for him to collapse to the ground. Then it's Halloran's turn to be up against the wall, with the lasers shooting out of his collar into the ceiling above. He starts admitting various corrupt cop shit that he's done, and after confessing that innocent people died because of him, the lasers turn off. That's when he notices something fishy. While his ceiling is all charred and laser, the one above Logan's spot is not. Logan gets up from the ground in a very Saw 1 John Kramer type way and shows that his lasers were as harmless as a house cat plaything, and that the blood we just saw came from a bunch of capsules lining the inside of his collar. He reveals that he's been the new Jigsaw this whole time, but that he's gonna frame Halloran with the audio recording he just took of his confession. People died because of me! Innocent people died because of me! I did it! Confused? I understand. Yeah, that's okay. This movie's twist is pretty damn extra. Logan explains that 10 years ago, in this very barn, a game was played. He illustrates his point by unveiling a couple of decade-old bodies, those of Anna and Ryan, so now we can add Ryan to the count. Turns out he was left in the barn to bleed to death after Anna messed up their keys by firing that shotgun. Bummer. And yes, just to be clear, the main trap plot of this movie took place 10 years ago and was set up by John Kramer back then, when he was still alive. Just, uh, ignore the flat-screen TVs and the high-tech Billy glow-up eyes during those scenes. Or, you know, don't. Call that shit out. It's a major plot hole. Logan had actually been part of that game, put there because of the fatal X-ray mix-up that messed up John's chances at life. He was the sleepy bucket head that we saw get left behind in the first room as the other trap plot participants moved on to hang out at the hoedown. I guess right after that happened, John Kramer emerged from a wall panel to save Logan and free him from the trap? What? John decided I shouldn't have to die over an honest mistake. Yeah, okay. Are we talking about the same John Kramer? Because in the same movie, he condemned Ryan to death for what was also a mistake. But okay. Now, ten years later, Logan has recreated that same jigsaw game with criminals that were set free by Halloran. He made it identical, except that he only had three participants, with himself and Halloran filling in for the final two. And since we're being shown this revelation, I can finally square up the kill count. That Malcolm dude they found still counts, since he was the replacement for Logan in this recreation. But the acidified blonde corpse thrown from the roof wasn't actually Carly, it was this chick who just kinda looked like her and was given the same choice, apparently, so she died in the same manner. Add her to the list. And the mangled corpse they found in Elle's studio wasn't actually Mitch, it was this other guy who apparently was put in the same exact situation as Mitch and died in the same exact way. Throw him up there as well. Logan is ultimately targeting Halloran because he had protected Edgar Munson from jail time since Edgar was his informant. Why is that such a big deal for Logan? Oh, only because Edgar is the one who killed Logan's wife a couple years prior. So Logan probably enjoyed it when he stood on a rooftop in that opening scene and sniped Edgar in the chest. During the autopsy scene with Hunt, we see that Logan just pulled the old Reddit switcheroo to swap in Halloran's bullet. Sneaky bastard. He also grabbed John Kramer's blood from the evidence locker to put under Malcolm's fingernails, used old audio files of John Kramer's tapes to reconstruct his own jigsaw messages, and planted those fleshy jigsaw pieces in Halloran's freezer to frame him. Best of all, he's got a solid alibi in the form of Eleanor, who got away to tell the tale. Honestly, for me, it seems like an over-the-top twist, especially when it's revealed that Logan has been a jigsaw accomplice this entire time. Before Gordon, before Amanda, before Hoffman, all the way back to when he was building that first reverse bear trap. I don't know, it just seems unlikely to me. After Logan reveals all this to Halloran, he activates the laser collar and it closes in on Halloran's head, killing him by splitting his head into eight pieces, so when he falls to the ground on his knees, it straight up blossoms into a demogorgon. As his corpse falls to the floor, Logan closes the door with the infamous jigsaw catchphrase. I speak for the dead. Oh, no, actually dude, the line is game over. You wanna take it again? No? That was it? That was the movie? Okay, let's just get to the numbers. Oh, oh God! Oh. oh, fuck. 
whatever. 16 people died in Jigsaw, a respectable second place in the series, especially without a Hoffmanator. The victims included 10 males, 4 females, and 2 victims of indeterminate genders. That's the car driver in the crash and Anna's baby, which, by the way, sucks to have a baby on one of these things. That comes out to this pie chart of genders, and with a runtime of 92 minutes, we had a kill on average every 5.75 minutes. I'll give the Golden Chainsaw for coolest kill to Halloran, I guess. The effects aren't great, but I just can't figure out who else I would give it to. And besides, how often do you have frickin' laser beams slicing a head like a pizza pie? Doll Machete for lamest kill will go to Asthma Lady. Lots of contenders for this one, but nothing's worse than dying in the street like that, mere feet away from an inhaler. Platinum Punji Sticks for coolest trap will go to the Buckethead Trap. Yeah, it's a super simple one, and yes, this movie has a bunch of cool traps, but this one became instantly iconic because of its simplicity, with five faceless humans being drawn towards a wall of spinning saws. Rusty Mouse Trap for lamest trap will go to the Chain Hangers Trap, just because of that massive loophole where anyone could inject all three syringes into someone else to pass it. And since Jigsaw is a new name for one of these movies, it doesn't need a personalized subtitle. And besides, I'm never gonna top that last one. So that's it. Jigsaw was released in 2017, and another Saw sequel is already being planned. But until that comes out, I'm James A. Janice. This has been The Kill Count. Thanks a lot for watching today's Kill Count. I want to thank a couple of patrons like James Bale and Minya Zoy Khan. We're done with the Saw series. I did it! Fucking did it! I did it, Billy! I fucking did it! I fucking did it, Billy 2! I finished it! I did it! Mm. I did it! I did it! I did it! I did it! Oh, yeah. What's next? You'll find out on Friday. It's not Halloween. I did it. Be good people. I did it. <laughs>